Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about our least favorite topic but most important, design interviews. The interview process can be quite long for companies, so today I'm going to be covering whiteboarding challenges since they're typically the most challenging portion of the interview. That's why they call it a challenge. If you're here, you're probably trying to improve your skills to pass this portion, but no. Today I'm here to share how you can ace it. Whiteboarding challenges can vary depending on company. Some are take home challenges that will make you work until you increase their company stock price. The one I'll talk about today is the one hour donning interview that makes you question why you applied for them in the first place. So with that hour you have, you're usually sitting with an interviewer. Um, what usually happens is that you'll sit one hand chained to your pen and the other one on the mouse so that you can efficiently move from tab to tab to look up your answers online. Now, if you don't have access to internet, then make sure to take a 10 minute bathroom break in the middle and pray to the heavens that they have better signal there. You'll start off with the interviewer giving you a general prompt and your job is to ask as many questions as you can in a small time frame. Yes, it's like playing a game of 20 questions until they give you the answer on what you're creating. It's also a great way to waste time in an interview, so make sure to ask questions or clarify something you already know. After that, the interviewer will step out of the room or if it's remote, they'll turn off their camera, which is even better and gives you a chance to take a quick five minute nap. Interviewers will tell you that they'll be working, but 100% of the time, they're staring at your camera to see if you're Googling answers. So what I like to do is to always look down while holding a pencil that's visible in the camera to pretend you're thinking, except you're not. Now you gotta start designing, which is the easy part. First off, choose your favorite app that's not too common and just copy it. And as far as changing the interaction and visual design, you can pretty much do anything you want as long as you say you have data. And data really comes down to your audience, so here are some quick guidelines. If you're designing an app, choose college students as your data point because they'll download an app for everything. But if you're not doing an app and doing something in real life, use your grandparents as a data point since most of them think an app is something you get from Applebee's. With the remaining time you have, you'll have to present your solution. Your interviewer will now walk back into the room and turn on the camera, and I usually recommend pretending to write until the last minute. Just watch Iron Chef if you don't know what I'm talking about. It'll make you look smarter, trust me. And remember, you're always trying to tell great stories. And with all great stories, they start with unexpected movie openings. Think of the opening to Ian Banks' The Crow Road. It was the day my grandmother exploded. Do your best to choose something interesting, and bonus points if you can turn it into a personal sob story. As you talk about your design and reach the climax, remember to focus less on the actual design, but how it's solving a customer need. I also like talking about business needs, so just pick a few terms ahead of time and sprinkle them throughout your presentation. So, for example, you can say something like, the goal is to be a game changer in a rapidly changing B2B industry, so we're opening the kimono to be the bleeding edge of technology for pet food. Clear, concise, and engaging. Now, most of the time, the interviewer will be asking you questions, so the final tip I have for you is to flip it around and ask them questions. All great stories end with more questions, so if you find that your interviewer doesn't have questions, one, you probably didn't pass, so good luck with that, or two, it was so good you left them speechless. And one way to achieve this is to ask your interviewer the same question they asked you. So if they ask you something about data, ask the same question back, but make it sound like they're wrong. So that's pretty much it. It's a pretty easy process, like I mentioned. First impressions matter, so if you're engaged for at least the first 15 minutes of the interview, you're golden. If not, you'll still have other interviewers you need to go through, so don't worry about it too much. So yeah, hopefully this guide is helpful, and let me know if you have any other tips. This guide has personally helped me get one offer from my cousin's startup.